Moving around in Cinema 4D is very much a two-handed operation. You have to be very active when you're working with 3D applications like this. There are some really great shortcuts we will talk about and some ways of moving around inside the viewport that can help you with your experience. The Cinema 4D interface has this large grey area in the center called the viewport and you will notice that the viewport has a grid and the grid has some colors associated with it. These colors are extremely important. They are red, green and blue and they correspond with different axes and the entire concept is the X axis is always red, the Y axis is always green and the Z axis is always blue. And these arrows that you see down here indicate the positive direction. So the negative direction is on the opposite side of the arrow. You'll also notice that down in the bottom left of the viewport is a little heads up display and this tells you exactly where it is the axis is facing. Now that we're ready to begin navigating in Cinema 4D, let's talk about this two-handed approach. In my right hand, I have my mouse. My left hand is hovering over the keyboard. I'm going to use the 1, 2 and 3 keys and need my left hand to do some navigation here. If I move my cursor over the viewport and hold on the one key, then drag left and right, I'll be doing something called a pan. You can see that I'm panning around the window. Now if I hold on the two key and use my left mouse button, I can dolly in or out. If I hold down the three key, I can do something called an orbit. The orbit has an interesting behavior and it will either orbit around the center of the view or around the point on an object. I'm going to add a cube to the scene and the cube now is at the center of the world. Now if I have that cube selected and just click anywhere in the gray area holding the tree key down and navigate, you can see that it navigates around the center of the viewport. But if I hold my cursor over the cube, let's say that upper left corner, and I hold down the tree key then click and drag you see that the orbit has now jumped onto or latched onto the upper left hand corner of the cube and is rotating around that spot that's a behavior that can be changed in the preferences but that's the default for cinema 4d the next thing i want to talk about is the middle mouse button the middle mouse button allows you to navigate between viewports in cinema 4d if i click anywhere in the interface i now get a four-way split screen I have the perspective view in the upper left and then I have the three autographic views top, front and right going around clockwise. Any one of these that I want to make full screen, I can click on it with the middle mouse button. I just middle mouse click to top and middle mouse click to get back. Let's get back to the perspective view by middle mouse clicking. And that's really important, very fast to get through those. There's also the F keys. You can hit the F1 key on the keyboard to get to the perspective view and the F5 on the keyboard to get to the four-way split view. So F1 will take you back to the perspective view, F2 is to the top view, F3 is to the right and F4 is to the front and F5 is for a four-way split. Let's talk about some very important tools and the way they look. You'll notice that on my object we have these axis handles highlighted once I have the object selected in the objects manager. These axis handles show me where the object is facing and also they allow me to move the object on the given axis. Let's select the red axis band and drag it. You can see that the motion is constrained, it only moves along the cube's x axis. You can also do that on the Z axis and I can do that on the Y axis. The undo command in Cinema 4D is Command or Control Z. Let me undo that and get back to the center of the world. If I want to redo that, it's Command or Control Y. The little triangles we see in between the axis handles are called axis bands. And they constrain the movements of the object to a plane that's defined by two axes. So for example, if I click on this blue handle, it's going to move on the plane that's defined by the red and green handles. So if I drag it around, you see that it's only moving along that axis. No matter what direction they drag, it's only moving along that plane. If I grab the green axis pan, I can now move them along on a plane that's defined by the X and Z axis handles. 
Across the top of the interface, we have the toolbar. The toolbar has some very important tools on the left hand side like the undo and redo buttons here. There is also the select, move, scale and rotate and this is the most recent tool icon. So the next keyboard shortcut is the space. If I click the space bar, that takes me to the selection tool from wherever tool I had and I can go back the other way. If I hit the space bar, it toggles between the most recent tool I had and the selection tool. To activate the tools individually, there's some great keyboard shortcuts. The move tool is letter E on the keyboard and that brings me to the move tool. The rotate tool is R and the letter T is a scale tool. So we have the move, rotate and scale tools as E, R and T. Let's take the rotate tool and take a look at how that behaves. The rotate tool has different looking bands. These are called rotation bands or axis bands for the rotate tool. Now if I grab the green axis, it's only going to rotate the cube around the cube's green axis. I can do the same thing in the red and it's going to rotate around the cube's red axis or X and blue rotates around the cube's Z axis. Let's do a navigation and orbit around our object. Let's say I don't like that position I just changed my camera to. There's a great secondary undo command inside Cinema 4D. Command or Control Z controls all the mouse clicks and object changes in Cinema 4D. Shift plus Command or Shift plus Control Z or Shift plus Command or Control Y control the undo buffer for the viewport. If I go Shift Command or Control Z, it will undo the viewport changes that I just did. If I hold Shift, Command and Control Y, it will redo all of those changes. Now, those are the most important things to remember about working inside the interface.